All right, here's a quick tutorial on how to do domain and range. And without being too wordy, let me just get right to it. Um, you've been given a function that looks like this. You can use the graphing calculator to get acquainted with the equation. Um, we're after the domain and the range. The domain are the input, or what's allowed to be plugged in for x. And the range is the output, or what comes out of the equation. Usually it's easier to tell the domain by just looking at the equation and ask yourself, are there any restrictions for what number you can plug in for x? You can give me any real number in the entire world and I can add 3 to it. And then I can square that result and subtract 5. So for the domain here, anything goes. And we can see that in the graph as well when we actually sketch this out. So the domain here would be all real numbers. You could also nickname it anything from negative infinity towards positive infinity. To figure out the range, the range is a little bit more complicated to figure out in your head because you have to figure out what could be the possible output from this. And it can be done by working it out in your head, trying, trying different numbers for x and seeing what you get for your overall value, which would be your y. Um, it's much easier, though, to actually look at a graph and see what's happening. So this basic parabola, I know by the plus 3 and the minus 5 that this graph has shifted 3 units to the left and 5 units down from a basic start of x squared. So x squared moves in that motion there. We're going to change the graph, though, and move it 3 spaces to the left and 5 units down. So the vertex is down here in the third quadrant, and the parabola will basically motion this way like that. It's a very rough sketch. I wasn't after trying to get accurate x-intercepts or y-intercepts. I just want to get a general feel for how the graph moves, because I'm after the range. And the domain, you always go from left to right. For the range, you want to ask yourself, what's the lowest? to the highest that the graph can be. Um, the low point on this graph here, it's a low y value at negative 5. So you would say that the range would be any number, or the graph can hit any height starting at negative 5. That's what that bracket or parenthesis means. It can actually hit negative 5 up to, well, as high as we want it to be towards infinity. I can sneak in a little extra training here on increasing and decreasing as well. Um, this part of the graph is decreasing. This part of the graph is increasing. Now, even though there's an arrowhead pointing up, you always read the slope or the nature of the graphs increasing or decreasing from left to right. So really this graph is falling until it gets to x equals negative 3. And then once it hits x equals negative 3, it rises for the rest of it. Remember that when you're talking about increasing and decreasing, you are giving a subset of the domain. So we want to always talk about x values only. The graph is decreasing until we get to negative 3, and then it increases once it gets past negative 3. At negative 3, the slope is 0, so it's neither decreasing or increasing at negative 3. So the way we capture all that is by writing out the graphs increasing from negative 3 for the x towards infinity, and it's decreasing from negative infinity up until it hits the x that's negative 3. Notice that the only time I brought in any y values is when I talked about the range. We've got time to sneak in one more example of something that's maybe a little bit more complicated or more interesting. If I change the equation to, um, let's say, um, 1 over x minus 5, what we're going to see on a graph like that is... Um, we're going to see that not all real numbers would work out. And again, for the domain, 
Domain is what we're allowed to plug in. You can plug in any number you like for x, as long as you stay away from 5, because you cannot have a 0 in the denominator. So we know that the denominator cannot be, the denominator cannot be 5. Um, have x equals 5, because it gives us a 0 here. So we know that x minus 5 cannot equal 0. So that means that we have to stay away from x equals 5. All right, so for the domain, anything would work from negative infinity up to, but not including, 5. And anything 5 or greater would also work. We're only skipping over the 5. So all real numbers except 5, or you could write it in interval notation like that. For the range, for the range, again, what you want to do is you want to take a picture of this graph. You can graph it by hand or use the calculator, depending on your skill level. Um, I, when I look at this right here, if I want to graph it by hand, I choose 0 for my x to get a y-intercept at negative um, 1 fifth. There's negative 1. So that crosses the x-axis at negative 1 fifth, which is more like right over here. And I also know that the graph has an asymptote at x equals 5. The graph cannot be 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I know that the graph is hitting a, um, an area there where the graph cannot cross or not touch x equals 5. Um, and just from uh, my knowledge about how these things go, you know, from all my knowledge in that, um, I know that it's never going to touch the x-axis, and then it will bend, not that dramatically, but it will bend that way. And the graph will also live over here, too. If I plug in a number like 6, I get 1 over 6 minus 5. So if I plug in 6, I get 1 over 1. So I know that when x is 6, the y value is 1, and the graph will bend around this way. So with your graph and calculator, you could also get that. And you could also notice then from that that to figure out the range that the graph will never touch the x-axis. So the range will include everything except for y equals 0. So the range would be anything from negative infinity to 0, but not 0. Skipping over 0 to infinity would be from low to high. There's only one y value that the graph cannot reach. Um, as far as increasing and decreasing, what's happening over here? And what's happening over here? It's showing decreasing throughout. The graph never rises. It always is falling from left to right. So it's never increasing. So for increasing, it would be never. And then for decreasing, it's falling from negative infinity to 5, and then from 5 to infinity. All right, quick little tutorial for you. Hope it straightens out some of the questions you might have. Oh, yeah, and also, be, you know, remember to consider sending me an uh, email or subscribing to my YouTube page, and you can ask me some questions or even ask me to post some sort of video response. And no one's ever taken me up on it yet, but you could be the first person, and I'd be more than willing to... Give it a shot if you have a question that you don't understand, that you want to see worked out by a real person. Uh, even though I'm two-dimensional here, I'm actually a real person. Um, so good luck with your math, and um, have a nice day.